Let the name of Jesus be glorified. Let your name be exalted in this house. Be magnified in our lives. Be magnified in this temple. May your name be glorified. May your name be exalted, O God. In the name of Jesus. We bless you, O God. Please stand with me for a few moments. We are in the season of grace. Somebody say, we are in the season of grace. Things are going to be happening very rapidly, very quickly. For the good, for good. Things are going to change so quickly that people will know that it's God that is doing it. Hallelujah. Oh, listen to this carefully. So, some, someone gave, brought a check of 1,110 pounds. Oh, the person has given 6,000 before. So that's not an issue. But it was a choice of the people. Because he told me, God has him to give, I think it's 1,000. I, I, I can't remember, but it sounds like 1,110 pounds. So, so I, and he told me, God said, you should give it to the church. And so I, I, I prayed about it. While I was praying about it, God said to me that it was the anointing for a thousandfold increase. Church, please. that we are entering into is the anointing of a thousand fold increase. Somebody say a thousand fold increase. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11. It said the Lord will increase you a thousand times much more than you are. Somebody thank you. I said the Lord will increase you a thousand times much more than you are. I'm talking of a time of food increase in your place of work. I'm talking of a time of food increase in your families. Deuteronomy 1 11. Am I right? Yes, sir. I'm talking of a time of food increase in your finances. Amen. I'm talking of a time of food in, in your spirituality. Amen. I'm talking of a time of food increase in your faith. Amen. You know, it's not about the person. But it's about the door that have just been opened. You know, I was thinking about that. It just takes one person to cross the line, and the gate will be opened unto all of us. The, you know, this church, we're going to start doing things. I'm waiting. I brought my envelope, and uh, God said something to me. Please stand with me for a while. God said something to me. From this day, if you do have a request, you want a petition that you want to make to God, I'm going to encourage you to write it all. God said you should bring it to the altar. And we're going to put it here at the altar. Nobody's going to read it. At the end of the service, you take your envelope back. And go and keep it in a safe place until the prayers are answered. Is somebody happy about it? Please show your appreciation to the Almighty. And so I'm still waiting for some document because I'm sending something off on behalf of the church. I'm waiting for some document to add to that envelope. And I'm going to put it at the altar. And when we finish, I'm going to take it back. Hallelujah. Please stand with me. God said also, in this season of grace, we are going to tap into this grace from the position of repentance. Somebody say repentance. repentance. God said we have to come in the attitude of repentance. And for this, we are going to use, before you see them, we are going to use the book of Daniel chapter 9. Verse 17. Chapter 9. 
verse 9. I'm speaking from uh, chapter 9 and verse 17. Now our God, hear our prayers and the petition of your servant. For your sake, O God, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary across the city. Look with favor on this city that is desolate. Give ears, O God, and hear. Somebody say hear. Yes. Open your eyes and see. Somebody say God see. God see. See the desolation of this city. And hear and, and that bears your name. He says, see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not, listen to this, we do not make this request of you because we are righteous. We do not certainly make this request because we are men. We do not make this request because we are in a big building. We do not make this request because we are very prayerful. That's not why we are making the request. Somebody say, Amen. Yeah. We, he said, but because of your great mercy, somebody say your great mercy. Your great mercy. Oh God, listen. Somebody say, God, listen. God, listen. Oh God, forgive. God, say, God, forgive. God, forgive. Oh God, hear and act. Oh God, yeah. Say, oh God, hear and act. Oh it is time. The Bible said, God, it is time for you to act for the people of the world have violated your world. It is time for you to move, oh God, for they have regarded your world as nothing. Lord, we want to see you move in our midst. We want to see you move in this city. We want to see you move in our lives. We want to see you move in this church. It is time for you, oh God, to act. It is time for you to move in our finances. It is time for you to move in our families. It is time for you to move in our breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus. For your sake, oh my God, do not delay. Somebody say no more delay. No more delay. Say no more delay. No more delay. Somebody say no more delay. No more delay. Because this city, somebody say, because this city. Because this city. Because this church. Because I. I bear your name. In Jesus' name. Put your hand together for Jesus. Put your hand together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please be seated. And the children can go to some respect. My, my, my subject today is the glory of the latter house. Thank you. Where, where are the amens in this house? Amen. The latter house. Amen. I said the glory of the latter house. Amen. I know you will see. Let's read from the book of Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 to 9. Let's start from there. I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. We're talking about the glory of the latter house. And I'm sure that you know what the latter house is all about. But let me tell you about the former house. The former house was the house that Solomon built. A magnificent house. It was the house that the queen of Sheba came to and he said to them, half was not told me. In other words, what we read in the Bible is not even half of what was the glory that was in the temple that Solomon gave. And, and so the people came back to the land to try and build back the temple. I had to knew. 
come back from exile. And then he wanted to rebuild the temple. But this was, this was their problem. And they look at their resources. And they look at the things around them. They became disillusioned. They said, how can we build this house? Do you remember the glory of Solomon's temple? Do you remember that David prepared the diamond, the gold, the wool that Solomon used? Can you not realize that we've just come back as captives? We just left Babylon. How can you not tell me that we're going to build this house? And it will be as magnificent as Solomon's temple. That was the problem. That was where they are. But they forgot something. It's not by mind, it's not by power, but by the spirit of the most high God. They forgot something. They did release themselves from the captivity. They forgot something else. It was God that made King Cyrus to ask them to go back and build the temple. They forgot so quickly that God that had changed the heart of a king who was not a Jewish person to ask them to go back and rebuild the temple. That same God is able to provide for them. That was the state where they found themselves. That's what we're talking about. Every time you lose sight of the supernatural, Every time you forget so easily what God has done for you, you begin to go into depression. You, begin, you become depressed. You begin to think of how you can do it. You begin to think about how can this congregation change this city. Can I say to you, it is not by mind, it's not by power, but by the spirit of the Most High God. Can we talk about the latter house? What do you think the latter house was talking about? Do you think the latter house was talking about the building? Yes, right. Maybe you're right. But the latter house is more than that. The Bible says that we are the temple of the Almighty God. Amen. But God is saying that I will, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Yes. All right, Solomon was great. Even so, David was great. But I got God inside of me. I'm born again. This house will be greater Amen. than the former house. Amen. Somebody stand up and say, This house. Stand up and say, This house. This house. Somebody stand up and say, This house. This house. Will be greater, will be greater. than the former house. Than the former house. I don't care how big Hezekiah was. I'm not interested in how big Solomon was. Then I'm not interested in how big David was. But there's something I want to tell you. I'm not living in Solomon's time. I'm not living in David's generation. I'm living in 2011. Amen. And the resurrected Christ is in me. And if it's in me, the glory of this house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Amen. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. I don't know about you. The devil thought they got him. The devil thought they got Jesus Christ. They killed him. They buried him. But like I said before, he was only for the weekend. Somebody tell you everybody was only for the weekend. There was a day, there was a day known as the Resurrection Day. Tell you everybody, it's a Resurrection Day. And our, and our senior brother came out. Grave could not hold him. Death could not hold him. Death was defeated. And he's defeated forever. In the name of Jesus. Say so the glory of this house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. How am I going to talk about glory? See, how am I going to talk about glory? How am I going to say this? How am I going to say about glory? He said this. Don't you know? 
haven't you realized that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth even as water covers the sea? Hallelujah. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you ain't seen nothing yet. Habakkuk said, the, glory, the knowledge of the glory of God. We cover the earth even as water covers the sea. You know what? Right? Until that is fulfilled, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. And God was dealing with me about this thing. Do you know what glory is? Do you know what glory is? Have you any idea what glory means? Moses asked God, show me your glory. He showed him his presence. He showed him his mercy. He showed him his compassion. You know that was glory, glory, glory includes all these things. And I was thinking, God, what's this glory? Can I tell you something? It was that same glory that led the Israelites out of Egypt. A pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of cloud by night. <laughs> and there was a time that the Egyptians almost caught up with the Israelites and told that the glory that was in front of them left the front and came between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Say the glory will fight for me. Say the glory will fight for me. And something happened. Something happened. Suddenly, the glory gave darkness to the Egyptians and light to the Israelites. What an awesome glory that was. What an awesome glory. The glory that can change it, that can give darkness to the enemy and give you light. That's the glory of God that is coming upon you at this time. Amen. Come on, put your hand together for Jesus. But I want to tell you something. That's not all. When they go to the promised land, the pillar. We didn't hear about the pillar of God. We didn't hear about the pillar of fire until the day of the Pentecost. Somebody hearing me? It's all of a sudden. They were in obedience and in the upper room. Somebody said the glory of the black house. The they were in the upper room and all of a sudden they heard the sound like the rushing of mighty wind coming from heaven. Say, I want to hear a sound from heaven. Say, I want to hear a sound from heaven. I don't know how much you are tired of hearing from man. I'm tired of hearing from the newspaper. I'm tired of hearing from the television. I'm even tired of hearing from the preacher. Somebody said, I want to hear from heaven. I want to hear from heaven. They said, a sound came from heaven. It was the sound of glory. That same glory that led them out of Egypt. They said, it came to the house and fell the building. Oh my God, the glory is going to fill this building. Amen. And it covered the building. And by the Separated, somebody said separated. separated, divided, and came upon each and every one of them. I'm trying to tell you the glory that defeated the world power. Then that same glory came and settled on you, Amen. and that same glory is in the inside of you. Amen. So the glory of this house, the glory of this house. shall be greater. That's the glory of the former house. That's the glory I'm talking about. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I was wondering. I said, God, I want the people. This is not going to be a long message. I said, I want the people to really move into this glory. Say, I want to move into this glory. I want to move into this glory. Say, I want to move into this glory. I want to move into this glory. I was asking God, please listen to me carefully. Listen to me. 
listen, listen, listen to me. I'm going to prophesy now. I'm going to kill every demonic oppression that have challenged you before this day. Amen. I'm going to drive it out by the blood of Jesus this morning, this afternoon. Amen. Huh? So I ask God, I said, how come the people move into this glory? He said, you need to tell them. You need to tell them about the principles of Kingsman Redeemer. Hello? Somebody say, Kingsman's Redeemer. Kingsman's Redeemer. He, he told me to tell you this. That some of you don't even know that you have been born and ordained by God as a Kingsman Redeemer. Say, I'm a Kingsman Redeemer. Now, a Kingsman Redeemer is somebody that God lifts up first. So that he can lift up other people. Yeah. So God, God chose. You say I'm chosen by God. You say, say I'm selected by God. And anointed by God. And God anoints you, chose you, selects you, and takes you from where you are, take you to a place of destiny. And break them and send you back to deliver your people. Somebody say, Kiss my redeemer. He said, but there are so many kiss my redeemers in this place. He said, but why are they not doing what they have been ordained to do? Somebody say, the glory, the glory of this house, of this house shall, be shall be greater than the glory, than the glory of the former house. Of the and I said, God, what was happening? He said, there's one principle you need to know. He said, this is the principle. Moses was a kinsman redeemer. But before Moses could redeem his people, he was divinely separated. Somebody say divinely separated. Divinely separated. It must have been painful to, David, to Moses. It must have been painful for, for, to Moses. And how can you have a, mom, a, mom, a mother and yet you brought up by another woman? Excuse me, you, you know how painful that is? That was not the end of the separation. God took him into the back side of the world desert and left him there for 40 years. Somebody said, King's man redeemer. Then I forgot about it. Let me think about another one. Then I'll talk about another King's man redeemer. If you know one, it must be Joseph. Do you remember about Joseph? They sold him into slavery. He had a dream. And they sold him and his dream into slavery. You know, some of you, they think they will kill your dream. No, no, no. They are facilitating the fulfillment of your dream. Amen. Amen. They can take your jacket, but the king is inside of you. Amen. They can tell lies against you, but inside of you, you are a queen. Amen. Is somebody following me this afternoon? Yes. And, and so they, they tried him. He saw him twice. But he could not take his destiny from him. Amen. There's something in your spirit that has kept you alive. Amen. And God said, I should tell you. Yes. This dream will never fail. Amen. I said, this dream will never fail. Amen. That's what I was told. It was painful for Joseph when his brother sold him. When they took his jacket, he said, well, it's okay. Maybe they're jealous about the jacket. But you sold a Jewish person as a slave. Then he said, Judah, Simon, Reuben, hey, this job is going too far. You know, he was a dancer. And, then, and he was looking at them. After some time, it became a mirage. Are they going to come back? They didn't come back. One day, two days, many years come back. Joseph was sold completely in order. 
to fulfill his destiny as a king's master king. Now, I'm bringing this to a close. I want to tell you this is how it concerns you. God said, I should tell you this story. Some of you, you cannot succeed as a king's master redeemer if you don't keep that separation divine orchestrated. For the period of which God wants it to be separated. Some of us are so sentimental that we think we are more compassionate than God. You understand what I'm saying? God said, I'm telling you. Wait a little bit. Wait. Get out of the wilderness. Then you can help. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, this message is deep. But you are a peace man redeemer. You got to know when God says this. Look, let me tell you. It may be painful. Tell them, no, it's not time yet. Can I? Can you just forget about my number for maybe one year? I want to do something. Why am I saying this? I don't know. I have no idea. But I'm asked to tell you this. But I can tell you this. If you are in the forest, and unless you come out of the jungle, you don't start picking the leaves that are falling on your head. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to get out that you can help the people. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, kiss my redeemer. Don't forget it, that and more. I'm not saying that. That's not what the preacher is saying. But God, we show this to you. There are people and there are places God wants to separate you from. It's not your dad, it's not your mom. Hello? I say there are people and places God is separating you from. Don't go. If God separated, don't go looking. Don't go for me. If God separated, pray about this. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about your dad. I'm talking about your mom. I'm talking about your uncle. God separate you. Say, God, I can help. But I just want to wait. There's not much you can do. Unless it is well with you. Just wonder what Joseph would have done. Halfway. Do you think Joseph would have helped his brothers? Let me tell you something. Do you think Joseph would have helped his brother from in Mr. Pontifar's house? No. Assuming the woman didn't tell lies at this time, he would have been the king of the household. Do you think that was enough to help his son? Why do you say now, I'm just being foolish, I'm just being here. Why, why don't I reveal to them that I'm an Israelite? And why don't I tell these people? I tell them I have my brothers to rescue. He ruined. What of Mordecai? Uh, what of Esther? What if Esther told them I'm of Jewish origin? He will never, she will never save the Israelites. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, sir. I'm gonna get we're gonna get testimony from this. Amen. I said we're gonna get testimony from this. Amen. Put your heart together for Jesus. I said to my brother, I know what preacher I'm gonna say, but what this one is deep. This one is deep. This one is deep. Esther said, Mordecai told Esther, don't tell them you have Jewish origin. But did, he, did she eventually told the king? He said, my people are about to be perished. Of course the king knew at the right time. Stand up with me, ladies and gentlemen. Say the glory of this house, the glory of this house will be greater, will be greater than the glory of the former house. Say I'm a king's man routine. I'm a 
Redeemer. Say, I'm a peace man redeemer. I'm a peace man redeemer. And I'll be sent to redeem my people. Say, God, I'm a valley. Raise up your hand. Say, God, I'm a valley. Use me to redeem my people. Lord, help me to redeem my people. Lord, every mistake, every disappointment, every disappointment, help me. Help me. Help me through this. Help me through this. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Put your hand together for Jesus. Please be seated. And so, my God of Israel. And so God said to us, but I remember the book of, I think the Kings, Hezekiah got a letter. And they looked at it, he said, this letter is above me. So I'll take this letter to the altar of God. And I said, listen, gentlemen, I'm telling you, I'm going to do what God said you should be doing. And no, nobody's going to read it. You will pick it and go and take it back to your house. And when your request has been granted, you come back and give testimony. Is that too much? No. no. Can anybody vow that I will give testimony? Oh, yes. Thank you. Can anybody say I vow I will give testimony? I vow I will give testimony. Yeah, I'm asking to do it. So can I, can I say I vow I will give testimony? I vow I will give testimony. So finally, as a church, we we'll bring this to your altar. Yes, yes. To you believe. You have some? I bought something. You see? That's somebody in the spirit. Put your hand together. I prepared this morning. I wanted you to pray after. Wow. <laughs> you have one too? Come, come here. Yes, stand here. Stand here. He that is greater than the pastor. I miss this one. <laughs> I said, He that is greater than the pastor Amen. is in the house. Amen. Amen. I said, He that is greater than the pastor is in the house. Yes, Lord. But you know, after teaching you all these months and all these years, mm -hmm. you mean since I said that you have not written something down in part. So as I was talking like that, let me tell you guys, let me tell you that. Go read the story of your pastor. Go read the story of your pastor. When I was in this year, there was a meeting going on in America. I think you remember I gave this story. And it was for two days. And the flight was going to take two days. And I told them, I need to be under that anointing. And I traveled. It means four days travel. And when I came back, they asked me, what is wrong with you? Where did you go? I said, I'm pursuing the anointing. Are you listening to me? What I'm saying, they said the zeal for his father's house consumed Jesus Christ. As I was talking since, you mean you haven't written down at least one request that you want to drop in? You mean that you don't know this man that is speaking? There's nothing, if there's anything you can get from me, I want you to get the zeal. From the house of God. And so, I'm not taking it from you because I'm not the author. And so, we shall bring it, put it down here. So, because I'm going to pour oil on it, I don't want to pour oil on, uh, on, uh, on that beautiful, on that beautiful, on that beautiful. Uh, Thank you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, yesterday, 
I was ministering at uh, Bucky, uh, a little town, beautiful town, not far off. A beautiful town, not very far off from this coast. Can we have a song, please? Just one song. Do you know why we're doing this? Somebody say the glory. Do you know why we're doing this? Who do you think? Okay, let me just. Who do you think is going to take the glory out of this? Who is going to take the glory out of this? Who is going to take the glory out of this? God is about to take the glory out of this. Amen. You know why? Because we're talking about the glory. Somebody say the glory. The glory. We're talking about the glory. the glory. We're talking about the glory. And God will take the glory out of this. Amen. I said God will take the glory out of this. Amen. He will take the glory out of this. You know, ladies and gentlemen, not very long from now, you will be looking back and remembering how few we used to be. Amen. Amen. Just enjoy it while it lasts. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I saw I was talking about something. I went to minister yesterday in Bucky. And a lady came from another town to that place. And when I went there, maybe a month and a half ago, this lady was there. She was spiritually confused. That's the polite way to put it. And she was highly gifted. I called her out and I prayed for her. And I told her, she was all in tears. I said, I cannot offer you anything. The only thing I want you to do before I see you again, buy any Bible translation that you can understand and go and read your Bible. All these problems you'll be talking about, I cannot solve them. And even if I can give you the answer now, when I turn my back, if the, another challenge comes, who, who are you going to meet? So I said, go read the Bible. Just find the ones that you, that you can understand. And they invited me again. She came all the way from the same, from another town, very far away. Came with her pastor, and four of them, with her pastor, the kid. And she started to talk. And immediately, I said, you are that same woman. He said, yes. I said, but you've changed. Completely. She was a different woman. I said, how is this possible? And I said, come on, let's anoint her. We anointed her, and I started to minister. And when I said something, she said what I was going to say next. <clears throat> After the anointing. When I finished something, she will complete it. I said, ladies and gentlemen, can you see? There's power in the anointing of God. Amen. She got the anointing straight away. Amen. And I got the anointing oil that they gave to me. I don't know why they gave me anointing oil. Big bottle that I used to anoint, and they asked me to take it. And I took it. And this is part of it. The God that can do it there, we also do it here. Amen. I will hear testimony. Amen. And God will take the glory. Amen. Stand up with me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Stretch your hand towards this place, please.
God has announced who you are. Perhaps some of you, God will announce who you are today. There are certain commissioning God is going to put upon you. But before